Thanks a lot for coming in so early. Pleasure. I appreciate Great that. to be here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the CSAs, the Canadian Screen Awards, in just a moment. I want to hear about your podcast first, the Firecracker Department. Mm -hmm. What drove you to create this podcast? Well, you know, um, Tyler Levine over at Carousel Pictures approached me and said, have you ever thought about doing a podcast? And it was right in my brain at the time. Like I'd been thinking about doing a podcast of some sorts. And um, I immediately jumped at it, A, because somebody else was going to help me produce it, which is delightful. And, <laughs> okay. uh, Tell me about it. That's yeah, right. Just sure. somebody else take mm -hmm. charge of it. And uh, B, because I knew I wanted to speak to inspiring women uh, in our industry. And not just like actors, because I think actors obviously get spoken to a lot about what they're doing, but directors and editors and DOPs, like people that we don't even know are in this community about what it took to be where they are. I should say, you said you've been thinking about podcasting for a long time. This isn't your first one, though, is that right? Right. So my company, the National Theatre of the World, we have another pad podcast with my partner, Matt Barham, mm -hmm. and, but that's just jokes. We just do improvising, fun, we bring in our comedy friends, and we just have some laughs. Uh, but I, I know that maybe this is like a super old school CBC question, but I think that like, just if, we, if, you, if you and I were talking 20 years ago, A, neither of us would be born. Okay, good stuff. <laughs> you it. shouldn't laugh after that. Just no, no, like, no. Right Nail, and I yeah. figured if I laugh, someone will think it's someone else laughing because it's the <laughs> okay. radio. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, they almost, yeah, sure. Let's that, go with that. Didn't work? <laughs> okay, good. Um, what do you as an as an actor, as a performer, get out of, out of podcasting? Well, it's something we can do, right? Like there's power in creation of what you can, of your own creation. So I can wait for auditions to come my way and I can wait for parts or I can actually take action with what I want to do. And this is something I think is really valuable. Not only in the, um, like with Matt and I, we have this fun podcast. It's just jokes and, and it's a great way to celebrate the comedians in our community. Um, and then they have this other podcast that is a great way to celebrate the women's voices, which I think is really valuable right now. W Always. W of course, which is interesting because I think in our in our studio, we were talking a little bit about the podcast, and someone said it's not necessarily a podcast about women in the industry. It seems to be more of a podcast about people in the industry who happen to be women. Yeah. Is that an important distinction for you? Well, yeah, you know, I gave it a lot of thought because I was sort of tired of the um, journalist question of what's it like being a woman in comedy, mm -hmm. which I think is, like, it's 2017. I think that question should be done by now. Mm -hmm. And so what's it like being that person and the challenges, we all have challenges in our career, but I'm specifically speaking to women because I think that we don't have enough platforms to have this discussion. Well, what, what are some of those unique challenges that you've, you've uncovered? Uh, I think, uh, like, as a woman specifically for myself, I mean, in my discussion as well, and I, I mean, I'm lucky enough that I am surrounded by uh, really amazing men. So they don't fall into the same category as most men in our industry or mm -hmm. the boys clubs. Um, but I think uh, there, there's a doubt. There's women have to be like so sure on their feet. Like you can't be, you can't second guess yourself in this industry as a woman. You have to just be sure of whatever your choices are, which is challenging because we're human and we make mistakes. But what about having these conversations? What are you learning about some of these unique challenges just from having the conversations? I know. I'm listen. I should say also, it's a very fun podcast and a very yeah, funny yeah. Podcast. It's not all like. But yeah, of course. But but, but what what are you learning through this podcast? Um, that uh, well, there's some ballsy women out there and they are working hard to get to where they want to be and that you know everybody's got goals and that doesn't get to, um, taken away by anything you know you're a really remarkable interviewer I'm sure I don't need to tell you that but one of the the greatest things about your interviewing is that you feel that people really bear their souls to you people are very very honest with you they share things with you that they wouldn't necessarily share with just anybody right well why do you think that is I don't know. Maybe the wine. Maybe we have a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> Four or five glasses before you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're. I've been listening to your show for since you've been on, and you're fantastic. I don't really know what I'm doing. Here's the thing: that Tyler uh, asked me to do this, but I don't have the background to be a journalist and be interviewer. I don't have any knowledge. I'm just figuring it out, and I'm curious. So mm -hmm. I think that helps. But I also think because I'm an actor, because I have a background and usually a familiarity with the person I'm talking to, mm -hmm. there's already an ease, perhaps. I, I mean, I, I guess I guess there's more ways for you to go. Oh yeah, I know that person. Yeah. Or, 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 or I've been through that. Right? Yeah, maybe maybe there's a similarity of bonding in that sense. Well, I guess yeah, you have an understanding of their world that a lot of people don't necessarily have. Yeah, sure. I also think having a plate of wine and cheese in front of you makes everybody go, oh, this is a different kind of podcast. <laughs> you know, maybe I should think about it. You should. <laughs> snacks. Always have snacks. A, B, C. Always because snacks. It's, it's CBC, though. I don't, know. I, don't know. I don't know what we get here. Maybe some... <laughs> oh, guys, we can do that. Some oatmeal. Yeah. Oh, just finger food oatmeal. Yeah, finger, food, finger food oatmeal. Yeah. Glass, glass of water. CBC has chips. I've seen them. Well, I think so. Upstairs, maybe. Yeah. But then you'd have like... <laughs> on your... 
podcast. That's that, not that'd good. be all right. All right. Tell all me right. some of the standout moments. I mean, some, tell me a couple of moments that really stick out to you from this podcast. Because I, I, I want people to listen to it, um, and I, I want them to kind of – I find the best way for me to get into podcasts is to go for this moment that I heard about. Right. Well, I think – I mean, every podcast has that moment of authenticity that I love. Like, there's a moment where, you know, you t- you're talking and you're getting comfortable speaking, and then suddenly something drops in and everybody leans forward. So it's the moment where – you know, Tommy Amy Peary talks about her her mom and her relationship with her mom, or or um, Zoe mentions Zoe Palmer mentions her her child. Like, there's all these things that sort of come out of nowhere, mm-hmm. but there's great moments of, of truthfulness that I just love. I think when, when, when a great moment is a good friend of mine, Annie Murphy, right, talking about her mom, right. Just t- tell me a little bit about tell well, folks a little bit about. I that. love Annie Murphy. I love her because Annie she, Murphy, by the way, Shit's Creek, Creek star S Creek. If you're listening yeah, in oh. certain places, sure. <laughs> You're not allowed to say it? I don't know. Oh, Who knows? Um, I just love being able to say it every which way now. It's Let's say it. Fun. Shit's Creek. Oh, my God. Just look at you. Just swear it up. It's my last day. Um, I said- <laughs> what is the... So what was the story she told? That was a really beautiful one. Um, she told the story about her mom. Let me see if I can remember. So she... she Oh, her mom wanted her, they, her, they had a vision that they should go into law. Is that the story you're thinking? And um, and she then had a role as Joan of Arc in, her, in school and decided not to do it. And um, didn't she say something like, I hate you, mom, or something like that? And it's this, like, awful moment that every child has probably gone through that we all regret, those awful things that are in our mind, and that Annie was able to bring it up and speak easily about it, and with a sense of humor, like, she's obviously past it they've made up she's good friends with their mom so mm-hmm. it's okay but uh yeah she's got such an authenticity to her i just think fish. hearing that humanity just remembering that moment where you tell your parent like i hate you right and, you know and it's something that sticks with you for the rest of your life i you know. know you're all cringe it's cringe stuff um I, we're talking a little bit about annie murphy now from from schitt's creek uh naomi sneakers you also talk to people who are not necessarily in front in front of the camera you speak with women who are involved in directing editing you know directors of photography why was it important for you to highlight voices that aren't necessarily heard on other podcasts, uh, in other interviews. Yeah, I think I think this is a chance to um, have some inspiration reverberated. So I think there'll be an opportunity for somebody to um, listen to this podcast and go, oh yeah, a DOP, I'd never even thought about being a DOP. I'm going to pursue that. And hearing somebody else's journey sort of paves the way, right? If you hear, it's like somebody saying, I've been through that, and then you can sort of see how they've managed to get there. And it's helpful for your own pursuit of dreams, really. So how did you feel at the, at the CSAs last night, the Canadian Screen Awards? You know, there's a lot of talk about whether women are being represented well at the Oscars. How do you think we're doing in Canada at the at the CSAs? I think we're doing okay. I think we can always do better. Mm-hmm. Like, I think, you know, I was watching it, and um, there were definite moments of, like, hey, where's the woman on the stage in that group of men? Like, <laughs> But I now, like, I mean, I think before I was feminist with a small F, and now I'm feminist with a capital F. What do you mean? Because I think that we have to, our voices have to get louder. They have to, in, in the political situation that we are now, I think that we have been woken up to the idea that we aren't as advanced as we thought we were. So we have to get louder. But that's not just for me. I think like everybody, I think men also have to have the awareness now where they're watching um, a group of men on stage and go, hey, where's the... Where's the minority representative? Where's the female representative? Not just one. Like, what about two or three or half? Like, and and be aware of that. So there's that's that was glaring for me a couple of times, and um, and then the, watching the acceptance speeches too. You kind of go, hey, where's the women who are behind the camera? That's also something that was aware. Because it's it's, it's funny you mentioned that the idea of of, uh, of women behind the camera, women in directing positions in in DOP positions, because I think that part of the great part of your podcast is that sometimes young women don't even know that these roles are available to them, that, right. they, that they can do these things. Yeah, yeah. And now, like, hopefully it's more you're more aware of it. I don't know. I think that these podcasts will inspire. Like, I think that they can't help but do something like that. Inspiration is important, and it's something that comes up a lot in the show. You often ask your guests what inspired them to do what they do, what keeps them inspired. So let's let's turn it off. Let's just turn the tables. Okay. Uh, not turn it off. Turn it off. Oh my God! And that's it. Let's right, just turn done. it off. The radio's off, well, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks fantastic. a lot. And not just not just show over. Oh, radio off. Is that what happens? Because you said the S word. What inspired you to do what you do? Um, like in the world of comedy. Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, let's see. Gosh, my husband always gets on me because I'll ask him a question. He's like, what about you? And I'm like, I don't have an answer. You should always have an answer to the questions you ask. Uh, I think 
It's the one thing I can, well, comedy for sure is the one thing I agree across the board. Like, no matter what your religion, no matter who, what your gender, what your beliefs are, we can all, all agree that laughter is pretty fantastic. We might disagree on the type of joke and the type of laughter. So the idea that I get to do a job where I get to be part of, like, a connection with an audience and have a laugh is, like, the best, the best job in the world. I couldn't ask for anything else. Was there a moment when you were a kid and you saw something on TV or heard something on the radio and you said, oh yeah, I want to I want to do that? I think it was more like me and my brother being silly at home that got laughs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is pretty good. Oh, this is how I'm going to get my attention. It's not going to be through smarts. It's going to be through, <laughs> leave that up to my brother. Uh, yeah, so Thanksgiving when, you know, you're doing something silly at the table and you're getting the attention, then you're like, great, that's how it's going to work for Naomi. Naomi, thanks so much for joining us today. You're a treat. What a pleasure to sit with you at Monday morning.